This is the Gore Club Podcast with Steve Vessel, Derek Sturgeon, and Death Metal Dave. Fucked up in that one spot, you know, because yeah. he's like dug into it. But he'll lose his soft balls in it sometimes because he's trying to push so hard. So I'll look and it'll look like a serial killer trying to like stab through somebody, like a knife stuck in a door. But it's like these colorful, these glittery soft balls like, stuck <laughs> in the fucking thing. Cool. No, I, I, this is why I don't uh, know all this shit going on. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's crazy, man. Soft paws. Soft paws. We should do like a whole advertisement. We should get them to sponsor us. Oh, shit. Soft well, I bought soft paws for my cat a long time soft ago, paws. and they were really fucking expensive. And then they didn't come with backups, I don't think. A hundred for 15 is a deal. Yeah. They're, you go on Amazon now. You get like a hundred with the like little adhesive like glue things for pretty cheap. And my yeah. cat's cool. He doesn't fuck me up when I try to do it. I've talked to a lot of people about it, and they're like, you're going to get attacked. Oh, uh, fuck. And I, no, mine just kind of, he does get terrified when I start doing He's like, what the fuck are you doing? You're right. But he's, he's got to get high, man. He's got to get some cat high, not you. Get, get my some, cat high? Get yeah. some cat in it? Some CBD oil. Get, get some cat in it. Some yeah. CBD, CBD oil, oil, man. My dog takes CBD oil. Freaks him the fuck out. I had to stop giving the, him. The opposite? No, 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 no. To, uh, no, 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 no. That's no. called was, acid, Dave. Well, no, yeah. he was on a mixture because he's taking some Benadryl because he's got some skin problems and he was on all these other drugs. And the doc's just like, just give, keep giving them Benadryl. And he was like a fucking lunatic. On Benadryl? Like, no, just on, every, on syrup? With, with everything, with, with, this, with this concoction that the doctor had prescribed him. He would just like, this is during quarantine, so I'm home all the time. I mean, he'd just get really high in the morning, and uh, he'd eat a little bit and then lay down. And then, like clockwork every day, like two hours later, he'd wake up and just start fucking barking at everything. Is he doing cocaine? Possibly, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what was. Somehow I lost it. I thought we were still talking about cats, and I was like, "That is acid." No, no. no. <laughs> it sounds a lot like acid. I've been taking acid. No, I, mean, I thought my barking, dog. Was, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. Whoa. Okay, we switched over to dogs. He's also blind. It's cool. He's good. Oh, so, Gizmo. Yeah, yeah. He's just, Dave has a dog uh, called Gizmo that has it's like a one eyed. It was a Pekingese. No, what is that? Shih Tzu. Same thing. Asshole. It's a little mop. It, they're cute. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 all right. He's just got one eye and a fucking attitude. <laughs> and wakes it sounds like up. a like if that was a human that would sound like a real badass he's got one eye and a fucking attitude <laughs> right I mean, it's a good tagline for, for a movie like werewolf like yeah. hey, you looking for me boy yeah I mean you know it's, it could be worse I guess because when he bites me he's only got half his teeth so it doesn't hurt that much I feel bad <laughs> all that, you got a jerry I, I, when pets get really old they, they are so fucking adorable yeah, uh huh. You just hate them before that, though. Just for like yeah. 10 years, you're like this motherfucker. Yeah. One day you're going to be old and you can't jump and break my shit anymore. And that's going to be great. Wow, my cat's depressing. getting fat and I'm getting happy about it. Because every time, like, it, it gains a few pounds every, like, month or so. And I'm like, you're almost to where you can't jump that high. So that shit's safe. <laughs> Get some more cheese in your diet. I just, like, look at my shelf and, like, my DVDs, like, high up are so fucking happy because he can't get to them anymore. He used to be able to get to, like, the top shelf. And now I can only get, like, three shelves up. And I figure by like December, two shelves. <laughs> You're just feeding them straight peanut butter. By Christmas, fats. yeah. I'm just trying to protect my action figures and DVDs by making my cat like a fat fuck. Oh my god, it's a good idea. That's how you can protect all your toys, like healthy fat though. Oh yeah, That's, how do you tell that with an like, animal though? I only start breathing weird and shit. Kind of like humans. <laughs> like a fucking child. It's like, yeah, he's big. Bone. You cut it's back cool. on the McDonald's. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty good. And then you start feeding them, but they run really fast, and they keep slow, slower and slower each day. Eventually, you know, okay, man, maybe diet you for a minute. <laughs> Your cat has to breathe, like, really fucking hard before eating the food that it ran to. Like, you gotta... It always good. sounds like he's sighing when he sits down. <sighs> yeah. I do follow, like, a chunky cat's Facebook page, though, because I'm a child, and I can't help it. I'm like, oh, look at the fat kitty. My favorite thing is I like, don't want it, but I like it. What is it? The black metal musicians and their cats. Is that like, you know, like yeah, metal that's, musicians that's the thing, and cats? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, are, we, are we on? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh, we're live. Yeah, we're live. Sweet. Oh, that's good. Good, good job paying attention to what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the Gore Club podcast episode. Hello. Four? Four. 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 Five. Four. Five. Four. It's four if you don't count the original first one that we scrapped. Oh, yeah. That might be like a bonus content for Patreon count, fans. If you don't count the underground tapes. Yeah. yeah. By the fireplace. So it's four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Four. <laughs> I don't like counting. I don't like that at all. 
Cops are coming. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> it's you can't hear those sirens, sirens in the, in the background. background. Yeah. It's, it's a wild time in Louisville, guys. So we hear sirens. We're like, fuck this. I know. Well, I'm, we're on a budget, man. I, don't, I can't have, haven't soundproof this room very well. Yeah. Well, anyway, we should probably do introductions. Oh, Steve. Uh, Death Metal Dave. Derek. <laughs> I'm just going to drop it. I'm just Dave from now on. Fuck it. I'm right. No, you'll always be death. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm being too extra all of a sudden. Yeah. Well, no. New people listen to podcasts. They turn it on and we're talking about fuck. It's like Gore Club podcast. They're like, oh, our cats. We literally like our softballs. They're really great. Southpaw. And then a, a five minute bit about my fat cat. I'm sorry, guys. They won't get all that. Well, they won't get all that. Yeah. No. I got some feedback on the first episode. A lot of people messaging me about my love about Billy Zane. I forgot that I talked about Billy Zane for a good amount of time. Mm -hmm. I just want the world to know that I would make out with Billy Zane. He would make out with you. And also for the dorks, the two dorks that messaged me to correct me, I wasn't talking about the original mummy. I realized that the guy in the original mummy looks like Billy Zane, but isn't Billy Zane. I'm talking about Scorpion King 3. Yeah. That stars Billy Zane. And oh. I got like a couple of people that are like, you know, Billy Zane is not in the mummy, right? And I'm like, Holy yeah, no, shit. I know. I love Billy Look, Zane. We're not that. Yeah, we're nerds, motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> well, for a long time, that was really a thing, though. People thought that. What's that guy's name? Uh, Emo Tough. Yeah. Is it it? Is it? No. It's not like Arnold Vosler. Yeah, know. that guy. That, yeah. They thought that was Billy Zane. In yeah. that Arnold Vosler. That was the character's name. I don't know. And I got like a. He's got, Dark Man in Dark Man 2, I think. Dark Man 2? Tar 2 and 3, yeah. Honored Arnold Vosler. Dark Man. Yeah, that's good shit. He's Dark Man after Liam Neeson. I didn't know that. That's Don't give weird. me that look. I didn't know. That's so weird. It's, true. it's a weird. I got fact. the DVD or the deep, VHS over there. That's, that's a deep cut right there. Is it? Die, <laughs> Dark Man die. I just thought it was like Dark Man knowledge. Yeah. And also going back to that episode, I did summon the Highlander reboot. So you're welcome, America. Yeah. Is. I said I wanted it. And now the John Wick director came out this week in an interview and said it's happening. That's awesome. They haven't announced if it's a series or a, mo a set of movies. But he kind of said he's in it for the long run. So I think he's a fanboy that's going back and kind of recreating that universe. But it has the same type of action of a John Wick movie. That's going to be fucking amazing. Hell yeah, really man. Good. Or it could be like Three Musketeers when they made like sci-fi or no, the Hong Kong action one. Remember that one? No. Why are, you don't remember that? I would oh, love man. it probably. Was it in the 90s? No. No, it was. No, like, but yeah, exactly. If you're like like ago. anime nerd or whatever and you're like, oh, it's like Three Musketeers meets like anime i swear to god it's like tim roth so is that's it. me yeah you would love it i didn't love hate it, it. I, actually, I wanted to hate it but i was like uh, i kind of i kind of like this ridiculous over-the-top action scenes when they're flying around on wires after like uh like crouching tiger yes it's exactly what it looks like crouching tiger with three musketeers mm -hmm. if you gave me that at first i would be like yeah dude that it's I'm that, that, just seek it out people and seek Derek. it out yeah seek it out people <laughs> and Derek. <laughs> and Derek. <laughs> That's a good start. Three Musketeers. That's gore club material, yeah. right? It goes right into this week's well, fucking person. That we're well, before about. we get into this week's person, we should definitely mention, I know last week we kind of joked about the death of a celeb with it being Joel Schumacher, uh, which still sucks, but yeah, it's, it's kind of more slapstick. You know, we're joking close, people. It doesn't hit close to home. We love these people. This week, uh, this one actually kind of hurt a bit. It was Danny Hicks. Uh, yeah. I've always, I'm a diehard fan of the Evil Dead franchise, but even more so than that, he's probably one of the coolest people on the convention scene over the years. You know, we have a, I didn't know him that well. We have a lot of mutual friends, a but lot. he was, uh, he was always the nicest guy to me, man. Yeah. I never had a problem with that dude. I've probably been around him eight or nine times. Yeah. He was always a sweetheart. I'm kind of bummed. And if anyone <laughs> yeah. was going to have a problem with somebody, it would have been It's you. me, because I'm a bit of an asshole. Uh, He's never came out and been like, hey, You don't remember my hey, Danny buddy. Hicks story? I uh, know. You should tell your Danny Hicks story. You were Hicks so story. drunk. And I'm not going to get into it, because yeah. we, when we first met, uh, it was at a hotel party. You were there. Of course I was, and, but not. Yeah, I'm not going to get into it. But was I it, there? it took a while, and then we started seeing each other at conventions again. Yeah. And people were like, you good, Steve? I'm like, I'm fine. Yeah. It was over nothing, but it's one of those things where everybody in the room, all of our con family was there, just like you okay because danny's going to be in the room I'm like what the fuck i love danny hicks but i was so blackout drunk and whatever the fuck we were talking about it got really intense yeah and, uh, well you had a those... horror hound after party hotel party yeah you with... gotta remember drunk steve yeah i don't remember him <laughs> really drunk steve <laughs> yeah at convention so, so we i remember yeah but i fucking i know man we got along fine uh john dugan is a yeah. really good friend of his who's also a really good friend of ours yeah um well i'm meeting through tim and those guys and those are some of the best group exactly. of people that i know at these conventions right and it's my, like kind of the whole yeah, crew it's that like party Timo, crew and the they, Timo show yeah the Timo show and they're always you know his family and his friends and they're always the coolest man yeah they're the nicest people and they put up with like dorks like me coming in and 
drinking with them and being up, as obnoxious as we've been in the past. And we're uh, uh, we're talking we, about the, the Tim O show with uh, Ben Harley and uh, and and Tim. Yeah, and Tim. <laughs> yeah, they do an yeah. awesome show. But that, yeah, they're, they're all kind of the same con family. Yeah. And I know they're all taking it really fucking hard too. Yeah, it sucks. And the Wrecking Crew guys, you know, they were always around him. And it sucks because this was, like I said, we've lost a few this last year that are like our convention guys. And, you know, this episode's about one of them. And it kind of sucks when you think about it. Like how many we're losing, you know, realizing how old we're all getting and how most of these guys, you know, were famous in the 80s, early 90s. Yeah. You don't think about like their age now going, oh shit, 60s, 70s. They might not be here tomorrow. We take it for granted because we see them all the time at these shows and we're always passing by going, well, I'll talk to him at the next one. Right. And then mm -hmm. we're getting to the point now, like, is there going to be the next one sometime? Oh, especially with this going on. Uh, yeah. And this sucks, man. Uh, but yeah, I just want to start on like a kind of a bummer of a note this time. <laughs> Danny Hicks, you will be missed. He will, you be, will be definitely remembered. be missed. It's, it's going to be weird, you know, going back to this convention scene and there's, you know, no Sid and no Danny Hicks, you know, and going into who we're talking about this week. No, no, Stuart Gordon. Stuart Gordon uh, is our topic this week. Yeah. I mean, Another hero who has passed away. And it feels like, like, I, I, looking back on it, like it was only in March, you know, it wasn't that long ago. And it feels like it was so long ago just because of everything that's been going on. <clears throat> Yeah, who was he? Ninety? Well, he wasn't ninety-two. No, he was 70, uh, 72. Gordon was like maybe early seventies. Yeah, he was seventy-two. Yeah, he was up there. Um, uh, the last interview I watched with him is with he was being interviewed by Tony uh, Timpone from Fangoria Magazine, and he was like maybe sixty. So yeah. time just flew for me. I was like, holy shit! Yeah, it always does, man. I know, like these conventions always do those reanimated reunions, right? Like, every five years, and every time I'm like, what? We're at fifteen years. We're at twenty years. We're at twenty-five or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's like what the fuck is going on what was it the second horror hound when the the pool parties were like really swinging yeah. and it was jeffrey combs and bruce abbott yeah uh i don't i don't think that stewart was there that year I th he might have been there was one of the reunions that stewart wasn't at yeah uh i think that might have been the one that was Sorry. like 10 years ago because i'm pretty sure reanimator were right at that point again it was 85 right yeah it's yeah. A, yeah so 2010 i don't think he was at that one Cause I have the poster, I think it was 2010, maybe 2011, but I have the convention poster from that reunion with Jeffrey Combs on it signed by everybody, but Stuart Gordon. Yeah. And then it was one of those, I saw Stuart at probably three conventions and I just didn't fucking have that poster. So I'm always that dude. It's like, I'm very much like, I want to have the one thing from the movie, the whole cast sign it. And if I don't have that one thing, yeah. I won't get your signature. So wow. it sucks. I've talked to him a bunch of times and just in passing, but I have nothing, no signature, no picture. I met him. Uh, I met him a couple of times. I've stood next to you when you're talking to him. Yeah. I can't remember what that show was at, but his table was like right by the exit door kind yeah. of in that area. And I was with you when you were bullshitting with him for a while. Yeah. He's a hero. I mean, all of our heroes when we were young. He was like, you know, I didn't realize he was a hero when I was young. And then oh. later on in life, I realized how much shit he did that I loved. You know, re we all know Reanimator. Right. You know, Reanimator will end up talking about for 20 minutes on this thing. No shit. Yeah. Uh, but you got stuff like uh, Robot Jocks, <laughs> which is fucking amazing. It's a great movie. I watched that show so much when I was a kid, not knowing, you know, you got to think when I'm a kid, there's a, the boom of like Zoids and Transformers and all that shit. When I see a movie like that. I'm like, hell yeah, this looks amazing. I don't care who made it or. Yeah. Who, and. Fuck, I love that movie. Oh, that's, that's the main reason I got into it because I just went to the video store and I was really into like Battle Tech and like yeah. Mech Warrior and shit like that. And you saw, I saw the cover and I was like, I gotta rent this movie. Yeah, yeah. and that's a, and that was you know it's not something I think about when I think about Stuart yeah. Gordon, but that's a great point. That, yeah, that movie, and that's a crazy one too because it's like it's all those like Greek names and shit. Everybody's like Hercules and Athena and Achilles, all that shit, and like shit you don't realize when you're a kid, but apparently it was based off like the Iliad. He like read it and was like, I'm gonna do a robot version of that i can't remember and, uh, if dennis paley wrote that or not no the writer only did this one movie oh okay uh, i can't think of the dude's name offhand but i know the story behind it that he's friends with Stuart gordon and gordon contacted him about writing this movie like robot jocks it was originally robo jocks but something with like a trademark on robo caused them to change it to robot probably robo cop but actually even going back even further the writer wanted it called the mechanics so it's supposed to be called the mechanics Stuart gordon came back with Robo Jocks, which later got changed to Robot Jocks. Yeah. And they had this big, like, he rewrote it six times, I believe, because, and then finally Stuart Gordon was like, you're making an adult movie that children can like. 
I'm trying to make a children's movie that adults can like. Yeah. So that was their big argument. And the writer to this day, like hates that movie. Uh, the last time I saw an interview with him, this had to be, I might actually read an interview with him years and years ago. He said it was like having a kid. And this is like a bad thing to say, by the way, this isn't a good, like, this is just his way of describing it. He said, it's like having a kid that you love. And then over time he gets brain damage and I'm like, well, you don't love your kid anymore. You fuck. Yeah. But like that is awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he was just using like a bad, like terminology, you know, and I get what he's saying. Like, you know, the script was his baby and he just felt like it got murdered by, I guess, Stuart Gordon and, and his vision. That happens a lot. Welcome to that happens a lot. <laughs> and there's also the case of, that's not even Hollywood. And that's how it happens. You know, I think full moon yeah. made that. And I feel like I may, I might be wrong on this. I might be getting this mixed up with space truckers, but I feel like it's robot jocks that had this problem. Uh, that empire went under while they were making it. And space it truckers got, was full moon. Yeah. So empire. So it's <laughs> robot jocks and the empire went under while they were making okay, the movie. Yeah which caused all kinds of issues with the budget. I think it got picked up by like two different studios during that time frame. They already had budget problems because they were shooting way out of the range. That's why I like the space scene lasts like 20 seconds. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> supposed yeah. to be like, it looks like there's about to be this big fight in space. And yep. they, no. they go up wow, and wow, then wow. they come back down. Uh, but that, that was a movie when I was a kid, man. I watched it so often for no reason, really. I don't know why I liked it so much. It's cheesy. But I think because I like Gundam and Transformers it's and Zoids. Perfect. Yeah, it's giant robots. That's all you need. It's giant robots. And that thing with the chainsaw dick. <laughs> like, there, there's definitely a chainsaw dick. And I, you know, and no matter what age you are, you're going to be like, fuck, that's a chainsaw. That's dick. a chainsaw ding dong. Yeah, that's made for ages three and up, baby. Because <laughs> <laughs> anybody else might sw- yeah. forget it. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it could be a choking hazard. Uh, hard left yeah Shit. sorry well we're talking right. about Stuart Gordon who really really pushed the envelope with all of his movies I mean what was he uh, he was so far left when it came to making his movies he was smart about like burying all of his subtext if you didn't want to know yeah. about it if you just wanted to enjoy the movie we've talked about this, about this before you weren't you weren't you wouldn't see it you wouldn't see his ideas of what he was trying to say about society yeah. or us or cops or whatever it's all there. Yeah. Most we, of his movies. And he gave us Lovecraft minus Lovecraft's bullshit. His racism. Absolutely. When he so, cast black men. Yeah. Like, yeah I'm going to cast Ken Foree. Yeah. I thought that was all fucking brilliant. You, you took these stories that, you know, now are kind of awkward. Some of them to like these days, oh. but now we have these versions. Yeah. Stuart Gordon. We can follow those. From know? beyond is what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. From beyond. Dagon. Dagon. Yeah. yeah. Dagon. Yeah, so I think good. for a lot of people, Oh, maybe not definitely having because it's like 2000, what one, 2002. Yeah. Yeah. I think for a lot of people though, that was an introduction to like the Cthulhu stuff like that, man. At least for me, it definitely was like high school me seeing that movie because the cover again, I well, because like, yeah, it was supposed to be uh, with the shadow of Over Ins Mouth is what they were really working on. Yeah, it's not based and off that didn't the work out book with that same title, so it's not based off like the Dagon book or whatever. It's based yeah. off that thing. That it's you, almost yeah. like a, a, Which I don't. a sequel to Dagon. He did the exact same thing yeah, okay. with From Beyond. From Beyond almost starts after the story's done, and okay. it has it goes back and you you learn about the characters, but uh, you know he just elaborated on a very short story. That the, yeah. the From Beyond is a short story. Yeah. Yeah, from uh, beyond, I've only seen twice, which is weird, because uh, of all of his movies, uh, that's like the most popular one. It's it seems. the most well, but violent. besides Reanimator, but it's definitely the most violent. Yeah, people think of yeah. like Reanimator being violent, but yeah. like he really pushed the envelope with From Beyond, but he just used different colors of like gore, so they wouldn't have such a problem. But he still had problems with the MPAA. He had to cut out a whole bunch. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the, I just remember the thing coming out of the forehead. There's that weird, like, little tentacle looking yeah. fucking thing. You know, this is, this is a dude with no knowledge of From Beyond, by the way. I've seen it fucking twice. So my memory, I don't have, like, the robot jock style of knowledge on From Beyond, but I just remember that forehead scene going on. Oh, the man, pineal gland gross. stimulated and it becomes yeah. hard. And he talked about it. Everything's about sex and violence with Stuart Gordon. He talked about it in an interview, uh, maybe in the same interview you're referring to, when they were talking about the MPAA, like, you know, censoring stuff. And somebody said to him, they're like, every gore shot you have, it's just closer, closer, that's it. closer. That is the one. And he's like, yeah. I, I probably have it on VHS on the wall over there. It's pretty much them saying, why can't you just cut away and do something else? Why is it always just, no, closer? Yeah, closer. what were you thinking? What were you thinking? Yeah, what are you thinking? That's the man? accent he gave the person. I didn't do that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I love it, though. I mean, I, I love all those like gory, over-the-top movies that he did. 
I mean, I reanimator being probably yeah. the biggest one. And he branched out. He did dolls. Uh, I think right after from beyond, uh, with, um, geez, he's, well, we, everyone knows if you're a, a genre or a street Gordon fan about yeah. honey, I shrunk the kids, right? Well, that whole train wreck. I don't wreck. think they know about that though. I don't, I think maybe okay, listeners listen up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 there, there's definitely some people that are going to listen to this and go, what the fuck that dude did this. Yeah. And he wrote, yeah. the, he uh, actually wrote the, t- uh, the TV show stuff. The, yeah. The yeah. Pilot and stuff. Well, yeah. he wrote honey. I shrunk the kids and he was supposed to direct honey. I shrunk the kids and he got sick. That's the story I've heard. I don't know if there's some bullshit that goes along with that Up to two weeks before he got, he, he had illness. He got yeah. off this, the, off the, uh, off the yeah. set. And he states to this day that that whole movie is his film outside of like 10 minutes that they ended up making. He yeah. said, they still did exactly what I was going to do anyway. Uh, one of my favorite things is going back to him talking to studios though. He wanted to kill kids originally. Oh, it was a horror film. So he was going to kill the some kids off. It. And they you came, can find the script online, by the way. They came back with him. Was, was this under Disney? Is this Honey, I Shrunk the Kids at Disney? Yeah, it Disney. Is Disney. It's a really weird story. Yeah. And uh, the, way, the way I re- read it, yeah. sorry, everybody, uh, is uh, is that Disney wouldn't just stop making kids movies. Well, they wanted, I thought they just wanted money. No, they, they, wanted, they wanted to <laughs> stop making children's movies because yeah. they were bombing. And it, uh, geez, what else? I'm trying to this rack before, my fucking brain. I should have looked at all this. It's up probably before. before like Lion King. They were going to become they were Touchstone Pictures. Yeah. They were going to be Touchstone well, Pictures. Yeah. And then like that's where you can see like you know, Ed, Ed Wood and all that because well, those were good VHSs yeah. to get. I loved it. Well, you get those Touchstone VHSs and it's like a Disney movie and they're like and the dentist or whatever. Right. You know, <laughs> it's the like, dentist. He wrote that. Yeah. He wrote yeah. the dentist. Yeah. yeah. Didn't he direct? No. The, no. He I wrote. He the, directed this. One of them. The dent- I don't know. Well, maybe I, I could be wrong. Everybody I, on the comment I, section, I, tell us we're stupid again. I think he just wrote the first. I thought, maybe, I thought he maybe, just wrote maybe it. Maybe I'm just crazy. Yeah, I think that's a little bit. The dentist came right. I don't. He has a gap where he didn't do much, and then he does the last three movies. Uh, I think Stung, Edmund, and one other one that I'm not very familiar with. Uh, but it's stuck. Stuck. That's what I meant. Stuck. 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 I called it stung. Stuck, stuck based yeah. on the true story of that yeah. shit happening, which is a basically about. Poor people and black people, you know, just being neglected. Yeah. Like, oh, he's just a piece of shit. It sucks. It's the if you don't know what I'm talking about, or anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about. It's the true story of the woman who the guy she hit the man, he flew he flew through her windshield and she left him there, parked her car in yeah. the garage and left him for two days while he died. He based a fucking movie off of that. They had it had comedy elements, which oh, was yeah. weird. Oh yeah, it was uh, like whimsical, but it wasn't. It was it was fucked. It stars uh, Mina Savari, right? Yep. American Pie Chick. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I've seen that one. Yeah, you should. It's, it's that's fucked. his last. Movie, Stephen Ray, right? you know Stephen Ray from like Interview with the Vampire, yeah. A Company of Wolves. Yeah, uh, v, you know V for yeah. Vendetta, lots of awesome shit. Yeah, because before that he did, I think it's Edmund, which didn't age well, which is that that weird falling down revenge style movie. Yeah, like guy, you know, old white guys fed up and. That's one. If you go back and watch, there's parts of that you're like, oh, God, yeah, it's motherfucker, tough. yeah. But but Stewart, it's also his way of writing this. You know, he's just trying to do falling downs. All he's trying to yeah. do, but the content sometimes when you're watching it, it's like, well, God, it's- that was a that was a book. He had a hero who actually he got to grow up with in the film in the theater company, uh, uh, um, Mammoth. The you know, he's he's a Pulitzer the Prize winner. Yeah, well, he wrote those, that story. That whole crew from that whole like Full Moon group or Empire. Yeah. Stuart Gordon, Jeffrey Stuart Gordon. Combs, yeah. Barbara Crampton. They're all like theater, like nerds. Well, his you know? theater from whenever he, from the like the seventies all the way up to be almost where he made reanimator. He formed three different, uh, theater companies like oh, screw cool. yeah. the organic theater. And I forgot the original one. Cause you know, I'm not drunk yet. And, uh, and that's where he, he got his whole crew of people. George went, that's where he first met him. Uh, George, Mantegna. George went, did something for him too. That King of the Ants. That's what it was. King of the Ants. Yeah. It's yeah. fucked up. And yeah. the, it's like him trying to branch out and people are still trying to, as they always do, like, oh, this is the, the director of Reanimator. But that movie is not a horror movie. Yeah. It's fucked. Yeah. You, you can't really classify it. Reanimator? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you can't classify it? Yeah. No, uh, King of the Ants. Yeah. That is a hard one to classify. A lot of his movies are kind of like that, though. because he, He's, he's like, a complicated uh, person and he, yeah. he wants to talk about real subjects but just bury them in like exploitation maybe yeah and comedy yeah it takes like kind of serious subjects and twists it around a bit makes it funny and whimsical 
Besides fucking Castle Freak, oh, which is boy. just like... That's tough to watch sometimes, man. It's weird. And it's even weird how that movie got made because essentially Band came to him and was like, he made the poster first. You know that, right? So, yeah, that's, that's some so, old uh, William Castle yeah, shit. Like, yeah, yeah, I love it. I've got a great poster. Yeah, he's got the poster made. Comes to Stuart Gordon and Stuart Gordon says, so what do you want? And he goes, I don't care what you do as long as that guy, that freak, and that castle is in the movie. Right. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. And then he went with another like Lovecraft story. I think it was called like The Outlaw. Was it The Outlaw? The Outcast? Outsider? I Outsider, can't, maybe. Outsider. I can't remember. Yeah. Holy shit. We yeah. should have definitely let Luke tell us something. You guys can, like, I figured you guys would know a lot of like the book it's shit. It's the one I don't where the, 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 uh, the guy is talking about the creature in the mirror and then yeah. he ends up realizing it's actually his own yeah. reflection. It's there's, a great story because you don't know that until the very end. There's no I just, I just ruined it for you all. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> well, you kind of have to ruin that movie to even talk about it. And it there's no comedy. It's like Jeffrey Combs plays this uh, like tough kind of, I don't know, like <laughs> fucked up dad, I, I guess. Uh, sorry. Everybody. I don't know. I wouldn't call him abusive. <laughs> like he's not like an oh, abusive he's a piece of crap. dad. Yeah. I know. But he's like, he's a shithead, right? Like he gets in a car crash. It kills his son. It blinds his daughter. And then he gets this castle from his mom that he never knew. And I love that scene that when he shows up and they're like, oh, the castle's yours. And it was your mom. She's dead. She yeah. was like, whatever the fuck, a duchess. And now you own this. And he's never like, tell me about my mom. No, hell no. He's just like, oh, this castle's great. Yeah, he's a narcissist. Going in. Yeah, there's no questions yeah. about your mother, anything. Just move in. And then this poor blind girl discovers the castle freak pretty much like, what, 10 minutes in? She's mm -hmm. wandering around, tells her parents. And they're like, no, not only is she blind, she's an idiot because she did, there's nothing in here no way you stupid girl like, yeah they just treat her like shit like they do and that happens a couple times in Stuart gordon movies actually somebody's like hey this shit's happening yeah and no it's not yeah no 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 it's not but in it's sorry kinda, crawford there's no there's yeah. no there's no other world from beyond and it's crazy because like the blind girl tells them at the start of the movie and we started this talking about cats and that poor fucking cat gets eaten, which is a brutal scene because it makes that weird like bone crunching noise when he pulls the cat through the door. It's definitely one of his harder movies to watch. Like that's some yeah. kind of like you because said, have no some comedy. comedy. There, yeah, there's it's not like it's there's, not light. The yeah. last time I saw that movie, I didn't even watch it all the way through. I was waiting in line to go into a haunted house and they were showing I was it there with you. It was yeah. Nightmare Forest. Yeah. Outside of Louisville, where we're they were, from. They were just they, showing it. They were showing it on the big screen while we're Whoa. waiting in line to get in. Castle and there's freak. kids everywhere. Yeah. And I look there's up because Dave's like, what the fuck? And it's it's one of the, it's the rape scene. I was like, what the oh, fuck? There are children oh, everywhere. kind of rapey. Oh, uh, the actual like rape. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, with yes. the hooker. I'm getting yeah. tired of talking about like bringing yeah. up like, yeah. the term rape in this, yeah. on this show. But seriously, like. <clears throat> To, we have to talk about that. I was like, well, I remember that. Yeah, there's a lot of these A's. I was like, who the, who the hell is in charge of this haunt? Because yeah. what the fuck? You're going to get sued. It's a really awkward, <clears throat> weird scene. And, it, and, you know, the whole thing is like Jeffrey Combs is getting blamed for essentially everything that's happening in this house, which is weird because it's like, can't go find the castle freak? Where is yeah. he really hiding? I mean, come on. How hard is it to find this guy? Yeah. It's, it's, creepy, it's a, a little, big castle. Yeah, this little creepy weirdo with a blanket over his head, you know? Which sucks. Like he starts wearing a sheet for like half the movie. I hated that because the makeup was so good on him. And then he takes that sheet and fucking wraps it around. I'm like, yeah. okay, fucking Zorro. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, that's the that's the dark one. That's the one that's like hard to get through because like you know what we just talked about. And then some of the scenes like later in the movie are just fucking brutal, man. Between even with him and the blind girl, that weird creepiness of him like stalking her towards the end. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's like. That's one of my least favorite Stuart Gordon movies, but I also like, I feel like I'll watch it like twi twice every, like, like every I said, I haven't, seen, I haven't seen it in years, man. The last really? time I saw it, I, I well, know Joe I, Bob I, did it. Uh, oh, did he? Oh, Joe that's Bob right. Did he it. did it in the first season. The I, first I just, season of Last Drive In. Just didn't then, watch that episode. Didn't have Shudder at that time. So. Yeah, it's just a weird, it's just dark. The whole movie is just a big old bummer. Starting off with the kid getting killed and the blind daughter and the, the broken relationship between a husband and wife yeah. and, it's weird. Which is it's weird, weird because all of his movies are always pushing the bounds of like what is supposed to be decent. Yeah. And he's been doing that his whole career. Like even in his plays. Uh, he, he, how he met his wife. Do you all know this story? No. No. Okay. No. He did a psychedelic political version of Peter Pan on the stage. And, Sold. Right. They got arrested that night because what happened was is that during the to go to Neverland, they dropped acid. And then there was a light show on like I think seven or eight naked women probably men too, but the story I remember the most is there was women. And so they got shut down, arrested. And his wife was one of the women. And that's how he, you know, met her through that. Oh. 
Yeah. That's cool. That's- but, he, but he's like, you know, that's how you know you're going to get married. You get arrested with somebody who shares everything you love about theater and expression, politics, all that. And that was in the 60s. Damn, it's crazy. Yeah. I never heard that. But and he's, he puts her in every fucking movie. Exactly. That's yeah. what I was going to bring and up. She's a like delight. In every movie. Well, when I met him, because I met him, um, I think it was, it was last year, the year before, the last uh, reanimator uh, reunion at Horror Hound they did. Okay. Um, yeah. So that was, that wasn't it, too long ago. It wasn't too years. long ago. And his wife was there with him. And she yeah. was just really nice. I was talking to her, too. It's like, hey, remember this? Remember this scene? Hey, so try not to be. A you jerk. just pulled a Chris Farley. That was awesome. I try not to remember be, that. I try, I, I, try, I, I try to think hard about what I'm going to ask people because you know when I when meet a celebrity, I don't want to be like you know you meet Robert right. England and be like, let's talk about this. Are you that guy right that tries to think of like a random question? Like, I want to hit him with the one that he's well, never heard. No, of. Well, you I, did that. We talked about that last little yeah, story last time. I, I, yeah. I do that sometimes. Remember but, you me? Know, I talk. I talk about the movies that that like when we met. Um, oh. Shit, I can't even think of his name now. My mind's going blank. It's it happens to me every time we go and play. Fantastic. I'm like Don Coscarelli. Yeah. We met Don, Don oh, Coscarelli. Yeah, yeah. And we Don were, Coscarelli. And we were, we were like, let's talk about fucking Beastmaster. He did. Uh, and he talked for like 20 minutes about how Mark Singer was gonna murder him. And I felt bad because I hate being that person in line. And the next person's like, get the fuck out of my way. Yeah, they got the like, little binder of we, shit. We found a window, there was nobody at his table. Yeah. And uh, it was perfect. And I, I felt uncomfortable because I was like uh, did we just open a wound with Don Cascarelli? It's like, because, yeah, he's like, Mark Singer is going to basically strangle me to death. Or It was awful. Oh, I, think so it's I thought it was going to be a funny story. And I was like, oh, shit. It's a very, like, serious interaction. <laughs> yeah. about- I think he said it was in his book. So I guess read that. Oh, yeah, know. yeah, yeah. He's probably trying to sell you a book. That's what it is. Well, I had the Let's book. Tell yeah, this interesting could, story. Uh, true true Indy is uh, so Don Cascarelli's book. To me. Go to my website. Yeah, I guess I do, yeah. Whatever, man. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so he puts his wife, Stuart Gordon puts his wife in all, all in all of his movies, which yeah. I always thought was really cool because it's like a, where's Stuart Gordon's wife? And you're just looking for her. And then there, <laughs> she pops up. It's like, she's oh, she's the nurse. a jerk in the movies. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Not always, but damn it, near. His wife and Jeffrey Combs. You can't get away Jeffrey from Jeffrey Combs. Oh. And then Ezra, uh, I cannot remember. Is Godin? Go, uh, Godin? Holy yeah, God. I'll butcher that name if I try to I'm say I'm an asshole name. and I you totally do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he kind of replaced Jeffrey Combs when he made Dagon. He's like, I needed a new Jeffrey. Jeffrey's busy, or you know, by that time he'd already done like Deep Space Nine and the Frighteners, and he was yeah. he was busy, quote unquote. I don't know, but Ezra came in and nailed it with that movie and uh, Dreams of the Witch House, which yeah, is no, fucking great. It's a Masters of Horror, and it's probably the okay. best one. He did two of those, right? Yeah, he, he did, did the thing with the cat. Wasn't there one with a cat? Talking about the black cat? That wasn't that him? Yeah, he did the black okay, cat. He did uh, an what Edgar Allan Poe one oh. with, uh, well, he did an Edgar Allan Poe story. The black cat wasn't Edgar Allan Poe? That oh, like no, that it wasn't. definitely be Edgar Allan Poe. That Damn. sounds a lot like it would be you Edgar Allan Poe. No, I meant like there, that, that where Jeffrey Combs is at Edgar oh, Allan Poe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. The black cat's not that one? No. Oh, oh wait, yeah, it is. See? Shut up, Steve. <laughs> Because I feel like he only did two. So. There's so many movies in my head right now. Yeah, because he definitely only did two of those like Masters of Horror ones. I remember that. Yeah. I just didn't remember what they were. Yep. That's the Black Cat, where he is actually, Jeffrey Combs is all dressed up like yeah. Ed Allan Poe and it, like, does the whole over the, it's kind of a really dramatic movie, but uh, Seasons, I mean, uh, um, Dreams in the Witch House is fucking great. Yeah, I got to watch that one because a lot of those I skipped because some of them got pretty bad. So I would like watch a few yeah. and then give up on the series. And then years later, people would tell me, hey, you should watch this one. Check out that one. I saw one interview where he talked about uh, he didn't even know he reanimator won the the choice awards at con. And he didn't know about it for like 30 years. He didn't know what it meant, which means that everyone chose his movie, his first movie as the best movie of like uh, critics choice. He didn't understand like the gravity of how awesome that was. He was like, oh, that's awesome. Here's an award on my shelf. And he admits, like, I, I knew, like, two years ago, whatever interview that was that I, I'd seen well, or read. That might be the same one where he talked about, I forgot what film festival it debuted at. But We've got to be talking about the same documentaries. Yeah, we were, yeah, but he showed it at a film festival, Reanimator. It was Con. Was that it? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, he talked about the actual fan reaction there, though. He's like, everybody loved it. And he goes, I think that's just the case of me making a movie not thinking about the critics. So they loved it. He goes, I think a lot of people just make movies thinking about what are the critics going to think? Oh yeah. And then the critics hate it. He goes, Fuck yeah, I, I be just, like him and David Cronenberg. Fuck yeah. that. He's like, I just do whatever I want and right. see what happens, which reanimator is the epitome of doing whatever you want and seeing what happens. Yeah. That's got some fucked up scenes, but you, people don't seem to talk about them unless until they're getting ready to come up like the head giving head scenes. Like yeah. 
I'm tired of talking about it. I'd be like, this is a fucking rape scene. <laughs> yeah. And I'm weird. tired of talking about, you know, three dudes talking about rape on, on, on the show, but like, it's fucked how people it's done so well. And you hear the interviews with like Barbara Crampton and yeah. how she's like, no, this is the most comfortable part of my, of the filming process. Yeah. It's weird how that happens. People don't talk about it. It's like the evil dead scene. It's like, Wow. Yeah, the evil. How do you shit, gloss like, over these scenes? Like I, me myself, I'm like, no, I, it's I, not fucking cool. I feel like just at that time when they came out, I think now people are starting to go back and go, oh, what the fuck, you yeah, know? But, but now there's so much they interview should. footage from these guys, and you know how they are in real life. Most of them, there's some fucking scumbags. There's out a there. lot of scumbag filmmakers. Who are like, scumbags. oh yeah, tits and yeah. Movie, you know, Stuart Gordon was Stuart Gordon, guys. George Romero, these yeah. guys didn't do it for like Sam Raimi. Yeah. They're not doing it because they're lonely and they have to have like nudity on the set. Yeah. It's just somebody put it on paper and they're like, well, okay, let's try it. Well, Stuart loved to push the envelope. Yeah. Uh, he loved to scare the shit out of people. That's, that was fun too. Like, I mean, dolls. What's funny about dolls? Dolls is great. So, dolls is great. It's I kind fucking of love unheard dolls. Of. And dolls is definitely like, if you're like seven, you can watch dolls. I mean, I was a fucked up seven. So yeah, I was watching it. <laughs> so like, so, so, I mean, I saw dolls when I was a little kid cause of the cover, you know, I rented it. We've talked about this a bunch of times that fucking cover got oh, yeah, me. The, the, the little doll, the red dress. Yeah. And, yeah. So the eyeballs, out. the eyeballs out, man. So I rented it and I remember watching it and it didn't like scare me. That opening scene was creepy. Like the, the credits. Mm -hmm. Cause it has all like, it's just pitch black with doll faces popping up. These like creepy ass dolls. But at the time I would stay at my grandma's house. I don't know, like twice a week. And if I stayed the night, I had to sleep in her doll room. Oh my God. Why is it, why is it every, you don't everybody even have to see that movie to fucking freak as out. As a doll room. And it was, yeah, it was already terrifying. It's those porcelain dolls that like every like housewife from yeah. the 50s bought those dolls off like Home Shopping Network. My mother turned 68 oh, yeah. and she started There's a company, I can't think of their terrifying. fucking name, they used to put those out all the time. Oh my God, dude. My grandma put out the plates, you know? like My grandma to this day is obsessed with that shit, you know? It's fucking damn near 85, 90 now, I guess. Still fucking, I got a new doll. Look at its eyes. I'm like, I don't wanna. <laughs> but if you haven't seen dolls before, dolls focuses on like this, uh, this old couple. They live in the middle of nowhere and they have a house full of like, toys but also like really creepy like porcelain dolls that come to life and you know do the murder thing all the shit you've seen in dolls Master of different sizes and all that yeah <laughs> but yeah like watching that movie it was it was still in my head i remember really liking it i watched it like eight times because i rented it you know it's one of those like i'm gonna watch it again watch it again watch it again watch this girl get like shot by these little dudes you know it's just because the kills are so like weird and yeah over the top so i remember going in that room i was like okay time for bed and I wasn't even thinking about it. And I lay down <laughs> and like five minutes go by and there's that weird, like, you know, some neighborhoods, they have those street lights. I knew you were going to say that it's the that light through your window. to adjust into your and, eyes. And that light is going through the window, like on a doll shelf. And I just see all those dolls staring at me and like, I don't care if I don't sound like a man right now. I was like, Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> like I was like in tears laying in his Your bed going like, starts, this is it. Uh, and I'm talking to myself in my head. Now here comes some movie spoilers. Cause you gotta know what's going on in my head here. I'm like, well, they don't kill the kid. So they're not going to mess with me. Grandma. Bye. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just laying there. Like I had to convince myself to fall asleep. I had to like, remember that movie that the kid survives. And I'm oh like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, they won't mess with me. I'm safe. And I, but then again, I'm yep. Derek and I'm a dick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that little girl in the movie is sweet as pie. Oh, yeah. Kid me? Hell no. They would have killed me in a heartbeat. I'm sure Demon Derek. <laughs> but I, but I, <laughs> he was strapping rockets to him and blowing him up. Oh. Probably. I love how goofy that movie is, though, because it's initially like this girl and her shitty parents that don't give a fuck about her, which another Stuart Gordon thing, I guess. It's a trope. I mean, obviously, it's something maybe from his own childhood. But that opening scene where they throw like her teddy bear out, you know, and she has the dream that the bear comes back. And like you have this scene where like this giant teddy bear appears, but an actual kind of bear rips through like the claw yeah, and amazing. attacks the parents, which is a dream scene, but it's fucking awesome. But then they all just like stumble into this old couple's house. And old couple is just like, you know, old and creepy. And they're like, sure, sit down, have some tea. And then like. Very Hansel Gretel like. Yeah. Come on in. Which would be kind of normal <laughs> enough. Broken down car. Nice old couple. But then like these two girls just run into the house. And they're like, what's going on in here? The We're punk rock down. girls. Yeah. yeah. And then the nerdy guy, you know, that's with them. And it's like, what? The? You guys didn't even knock. They literally just open the door, walk in and start fucking talking. And then the old people are like, okay, we'll take care of you. And then the nerdy dude, who's just essentially us. Yeah. 
Like, he's awesome, you, actually. And he's used yeah. him before in other yeah. movies, too. If you rewatch that movie, he's just like any of us, like action figure collectors and shit. Like he's going through their house, like touching their shit, playing with the toys. Like when they go in that basement scene, he's like actually playing with one of the toys and like <laughs> talking about how cool it is until he gets like creeped out by the old man. But uh, yeah, that's just a weird like it's a that's another one that's like a horror comedy. But I thought they did it better than like Puppet Master and Chucky and shit because they made it to where the toys. This is going to sound stupid because it's like a toy movie, but they were realistic and how they killed people. Yeah. Like it took like a hundred jabs from those miniature knives to do. Oh, it, yeah. You know? Yeah. That's, like, that's definitely something they tried to pull over into the Puppet Masters yeah. and they different were, levels yeah. of, 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 and then they were just like, fuck it. We got, we've got somebody spitting leeches. We got yeah. a guy but with this guns. was also the first movie Wait, that, that Charles Band did that he wanted dolls and he wanted those before he did like doll man and demonic toys. Mm-hmm. This is yeah. the very first one. Yeah. And it's, it's like that comedy style, but it's still creepy. And I know? think it's empire. It's still empire. You know, this would have been pictures. empire at this yeah. point still. Cause this was before robot jocks. So yeah. this was like his, I guess maybe his third movie. I don't yeah. know. And it's if like you don't third. know what we're talking about, Charles Band, who, produced most of his early films uh steve gordon's uh, films he had a company called empire pictures before it became full moon everyone knows full moon if you don't you think think of ginger dead man and things like that evil like, bong yeah evil you know puppet he, master right those movies so in the right i guess in the very early 90s it just switched over they they yep. they changed names all that and, and yeah he only released a few on full moon yeah a lot of the stuff that wasn't released steve gordon. became full moon later Cause I know there's like, I have a lot of like Blu-rays yeah. and shit that I know were not full moon initially that are, cause I don't think like sorority babes was right. No, 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 no. And no. I have that, like the Blu-ray of that's full moon yeah. and all that. So that's, I think they, they just, probably just bought that. They took everything and yeah, or they're doing the trauma thing and they're buying rights to certain things or somebody's gonna be in the comments like, no, that's not at all how that works. You idiots. <laughs> and that's fair. Cause <laughs> if you look at us, I'm just saying, I remember things a certain way. I but love then, all those Empire movies. I love yeah. them all. I mean, there's Trancers is fucking, they're, they're like really good, high quality. Uh, the first subspecies, things like that. I think that's, uh, I think subspecies was full moon, but it was still like high quality. You don't, like the first one? you don't like that whole series? No, oh, I do. Series. But I'm just saying, we talked about that not too long yeah. ago. Was Waxwork under that? I don't think so, no. Really? I feel like that was. Probably no, I think that's Vestron. Isn't Maybe it? I was getting things that are in box sets mixed up. Was. Oh, yeah. Okay. Somebody, somebody smacked me with some knowledge on the comments yeah, section. If you're watching this on YouTube, that is. Well, somebody will text me. I'll get like a text going like, actually, which is I've been fine. getting emails. Yeah. Yeah. I think at the start of this podcast each week, we're just going to like clean up what we said the last week, correct ourselves. Oh, yeah. I think we that, can pull that. That'd be fun. I didn't mean correction. Since you guys love I mean to call me out, I'll go, I'll go through some corrections for you. But yeah, that, that doll thing, man, it stayed in my head for a long time. And I went back and rewatched it like a year ago for the first time in probably a decade. And I remember like every scene because I watched it so much as a kid because of how it stayed in my head from that opening scene to the bear thing to like the good guy action figure lover who gets like <laughs> fucking loses at the end because he gets stuck with a kid. They're like, hey, you live, but you win a kid. Are you fucking kidding me? You have a child. <laughs> this is like I went 40 years oh. of my life being a virgin and now I have a five year old. A surprise. God, how'd you lose life that hard? He's a good person, Derek. Fuck. He got the kid without any other reward. I know. That's true. He didn't get the girlfriend, anything. Well, right. Nothing. Yeah. He at least scored with like that old creepy lady. If you haven't figured it out, if you're listening to this Her podcast, we're watching it, whatever, you're going to get spoilers because we just talk and we don't think about anybody else's feelings, obviously. I'm sorry. It's dull. <laughs> no, it's great. There's nothing. This isn't the sixth sense. Yeah. yeah but I, nobody's, nobody's I want to go back to uh, 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 Dagon for a minute uh, because the thing about that movie that why I think me and a lot of fans yeah. were waiting for, it was the first reteaming of Brian Usna and uh, Stuart Gordon because I've been yeah. waiting there for a while. They kind of broke off. Usna did like... Uh, Bride of uh, Reanimator. He started making his own movies and producing them. Uh, he did Return of the Dead Part Three. Society. Yeah, Society's fucking great. Yes. Uh, and Stuart Gordon went off and did his own thing. Uh, and but that Dagon was the first one when they got back together. You know, they they formed a new film company. I don't know if it was limited or what. And then filmed that in Spain. And that movie is so fucking New England, even though it's in Spain. Like the housing, the the lighting. The, the, everything is just perfect for that movie and it sucks you haven't seen it <laughs> Derek what I have seen it oh. what are you talking about okay I, thought, I okay don't listen to me dude this was like 20 minutes ago we had a whole conversation <laughs> sorry I, just I was here you were top. here Dave was here <laughs> yeah Shane was here we were all here <laughs> We're had a cool. whole thing about it. <laughs> but I was like, literally, that was my inter- I had a whole thing about, hey, that's interesting. I think, I think Steve's computer. drinking something. He's going to Neverland. It's cool. Yeah, some of those, you get some of, Dave, <laughs> some of, Dave, some of Dave's cat treats in your mm. mug there. But, you know, it's, it's a fucking fantastic movie. And that, that, that was a big deal. 
No, it was awesome. Like I said, that was my introduction to that yeah. whole like universe, really. Outside of just like people mentioning the edgy kids that were into Lovecraft in high school and shit. I didn't know they weren't. most of that. They weren't. They didn't read it. Oh, they weren't fucking reading. I can tell you that. I knew no. those kids. No. They just, yeah. they just, I, cause like, you're not pausing right. your fucking Limp Biscuit CD to read Lovecraft, you fucking dick. <laughs> no, I mean, I read the Lovecraft. The, the, the reason, cause uh, when Dagon came out, I, I didn't know anything about it other than like I saw it on the shelf and I was like, Dagon, wait a sec. Is that, uh, the, you know, the, the, the Cthulhu, uh, role-playing game. Oh Call my God. Cthulhu, yeah. You know, the one where you just die Call or, Cthulhu. or oh, the, yeah. uh, Arkham horror board game. I was like, Oh, I know what that is. Oh God. And That's the I one saw, you always yeah. fucking yeah. die. And then, and then I saw Stuart Gordon. I was like, all right, I've got to rent this right now. So I home, watch it. I was super excited. It's weird I was like, spot. because I mean, nobody, nobody really makes those makes makes those those, those movies or you oh, know those good versions of good it. versions of them yeah. and you know the last the last person to try to make a lovecraft movie was uh del toro Guillermo del toro well the uh, color of space is amazing well okay well oh, i haven't seen that one recent. that one's yeah. that, that one's still, oh, yeah. that one's on my list but i haven't watched Man, it yet. put it at the top i am i'm waiting until it's on shutter god yeah. i'm so happy nick cage fucked up on his taxes and he has to do all this shit now. oh it's, it's amazing it's so good i love it because I love Nick Cage, and I'm like, oh, you're doing all the stuff I like now. There yeah, you go, yeah. buddy. Well, he, no he, more national. He's always lo- he's always loved that shit, but he he couldn't put his name on, it, or he would be a producer like uh, Shadow yeah. the Vampire. He made that movie happen. Yeah, I like him. I like how he's making all these crazy choices, like Mom and Dad, Mandy, which was filmed here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They filmed it at that mm-hmm. high school out here, right? Yeah, no, they, yeah. They filmed most of the film of then, uh, Mom and Dad here in Louisville, Kentucky. So yeah. That's not a Stuart Gordon movie. No, uh, but sorry, we just branched off into Nick Cage. That, that's a whole nother podcast that could last. Nick Cage. <laughs> just the Wild shit. Heart, man. Just put thing. that one on the shelf. And we'll, we'll get back to Nick Cage. Yeah, we will get back to Nick Cage one day. Bees. <laughs> it's a shame shit. that he's not in any Stuart Gordon movies. So I would love to recast. Like, I love Jeffrey Combs, but just give like Nick Cage reanimator just for fun. <laughs> just, <laughs> did you ever see the, uh, the musical? The, the, of reanimated yeah I mean, it didn't tour down here but i mean no. like there, there's dvds of it I've oh got, no i never saw that yeah yeah he Stuart gordon actually made that happen he he wrote the book that they would like to follow like you know like they, this is the bible of the musical that he has to have all these things and then you're allowed to do it and you're on a touring company like oh, you know fuck, he, that's cool yes they did reanimator the music but we didn't get it no no i was trying to no. get the alley theater here in louisville to do it Why didn't um they? i, I don't those know. motherfuckers yeah, I had a friend who's a director down there. I was like, hey, man, you, yeah. you guys did e- uh, Evil Dead, the musical. I won't this is going to be fucking amazing. Place. They did Evil Dead, and they gave me Point Break Live, which I loved right? so much. So Yeah, thank you, Alley Theater, RIP, because yeah. it's no longer yeah. around. Yeah, I should have gave us Reanimator. You would have made so much money. That could have saved you. That could, <laughs> it it had a splatter zone, point. just like Evil Dead. Oh, uh, that would have been cool. Yeah, yeah, it was great. They kill a cat in it on stage i don't know like a fake cat not a real cat <laughs> obviously cat dead like, details later yeah i'm just wondering i just want to know what happens in it you said you saw it right yeah but no wait no no no. i didn't see it oh hmm. you missed no 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 i did not see it i was asking if you had seen it oh you just assumed i think we've all got homework now we got to find a copy of this and oh i'm going yeah. yeah it's gonna happen now i have to or i'll lose my fucking mind i'll yeah. probably have to find it tonight yeah or i won't be able to sleep i get excited it's a real problem i will just dig head first into shit and uh, it's almost to the point where you don't even have to watch it by the time you watch it i don't care about spoilers i don't care about any of that stuff i, I just dig and dig yes i ignore I know the spoiler who, oh you, uh, yeah that's right we I, are the complete opposite when it comes to that i have a i have like a rule i won't watch more than one trailer for anything so i'll see the first trailer and that's it if it's a movie that i know i'm going to see anyway i'll try to avoid the trailer oh, completely unless i'm in the movies and i get stuck watching it before a film that yeah. most see. trailers are like uh, they're like four minutes long and they tell you the whole plot and everything that happens yeah it's not as bad with like genre films like the straight to dvd shit we see or stuff that goes straight to streaming but like the hollywood movies it's like a six minute trailer that tells me like the beginning the middle the end yeah i know especially those sports movies where it's supposed to be like you know some coach comes to like a shitty high school and they're going they're to like, win they're like how are they going to do it and like the end of the trailer is them all high-fiving holding a trophy up and i'm like well fuck that we know what happens there i mean minus the one kid that sadly dies in the middle of the movie so i can have some kind of emotion about it there's been a but, couple uh, of smart trailer movie. editors that have done it. They've edited to where you're like, oh, I know the whole fucking movie. And then it's not. I like teasers. Very, trailers. very rare. It's very rare. Yeah. Like with Star Wars, I like the teasers. You know, those, oh, yeah. those were fun. You know, I like those old. We were talking about Touchstone earlier. I like those old trailers because it was so fun. Like I said, watching like this crazy horror trailer. And then it's like the sword in the stone. <laughs> I'm like, cool. Yeah, I've talked about that on the on the uh, on the Monster Squad VHS at the beginning of it. There's a trailer for the Unholy, and that is so not a fucking kids movie. 
<laughs> but you know, it was the 80s, so whatever. Oh, yeah, I guess. I don't remember. I don't know. I had two ratings then. I don't know if Monster Squad by the day's standards is a kid's movie. No. What? The language and shit in it, man. I don't know. There's some, there's Go some back. pretty. I think we've, I think we're coming around to it though. I think they're trying to bring it back to where they're not, everything's not dumbed down. I think it looked, yeah. like when you watch like episode one, it's like, why, why is this so fucking stupid and dumbed down? Yeah. Oh no, I like it. I just, I, I love Monster Squad. It's my yeah. favorite movies ever. There's some of the shit the kids definitely say in it that I'm like, eh, I must, don't really want my seven, Oh, there's some yeah. seven, eight year old yeah. shit going to down. like, yeah, repeat that. I even had to have a talk because my son, like I was so excited to show it to him. This was, you know, six years ago now at yes. this point but i remember going like, yeah fuck yeah we're gonna watch monster squad he's gonna love it just like i did he's gonna watch it every day just like uh, i did and he did love it but then like he said a word from it one time yeah not knowing what it homophobia means. Is, yeah it's, it's, that's exactly 80s, you know yeah. it's like what the and fuck and i had to really have that talk with him like hey man this is you know and it sucks you have to say it because it sounds like you're defending it but i was like hey this is a product of its time a lot of movies at this point they they didn't find this offensive then because they didn't understand what they were saying. I try to explain it that way, even though they definitely did know what they were saying. Well, it and it's total homophobic bullshit. Male. Yeah, but I don't want to make him like hate the fucking movie. So I'm just kind of like, don't say these things ever in your life. Hell and you'll be okay. No. And and he gets it now. Like even now he's a bit older, and he he'll watch it and go, "Yep, yeah, I'm not gonna say that shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is good." But when it came out, when that came out on Blu-ray too, it, that's it, when it, I got it. Yeah. That, that were it, that, you know, that's the first time I'd seen it in years when it came yep. out on DVD. Cause you couldn't find a fucking VHS of you it. You couldn't find it anywhere. Cause it, it was, was like, yeah, I know it's, it's right on there. my wall. It's right there. It was like, it was like $200 <laughs> yeah, to get that was... VHS and you couldn't find it. And then it came out and I watched it. And I was like, Oh, I don't remember all this. And you yeah. just, you know, there's a lot of dude, Bill and Ted bogus, I mean, the bogus. A journey. lot of that. Like, what the yeah. fuck did he just say? It's like slipped in. And some of those scripts are written, written by either women or homosexuals and they are trapped by the studio system. So they have to play along or they're still in the closet and they come out later and like, well, I had to like, just like put that, that like machismo on it. Right. Yeah. And that, you know, I had to direct the, you know, that I didn't want them to know I wouldn't have a job. That's yeah. fucking awful. Yeah. And I don't, it doesn't bother me too much when it's a character. And we talked about Night of the Demons before when it's a character that's supposed to be just legitimately a piece of shit and I'm supposed to hate them. And they're saying these things because I'm supposed to hate this character. That doesn't bother me too much. It's when it's like the group of like people I'm supposed to be cheering for, like Monster Squad does it. And then oh yeah, when they're all going back and forth and just using you know certain words and slurs and shit. I'm like, come on, man! Like, you're you're trying to get me to like these guys. Quit making them such assholes. Yeah. And it's even bad when you go back and even watch like the comedies from the nineties, like American pie and all that shit. I went back and watched those and comedies just like, from just five years ago. Dude, yeah. Yeah. But it, like, like college what? trip 14 fuck. and it's, uh, it's only like a couple yeah. of years old, but like there's a uh, whole series of that shit dude, that has not stopped. Kevin Smith. I fucking love Kevin Smith, but man, you watch any of those clerks, small rats. It's like 90% like homophobic jokes, especially yeah. if like Jason Muse, who I also love, but those movies don't yeah. age very well as far as dialogue. Especially coming from somebody like Smith that I know means it all in like a comedic way, but it just does not work. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're exciting. fucking smarter than this. Yeah. And you were talking about how you were like showing your son, you're, yeah. you're, 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 and then you realize and you have to talk to them. Yeah. I'm showing my daughters yeah. and one of them is not white. So it's like even yeah. a, another perspective that maybe I didn't even see. And she's like, uh, dad, I'm like, oh my fucking, I didn't see it that way because yeah. I'm a white dude. Yeah. I'm a white man. Yeah, there's certain things that you know you're not going to notice, or just insensitivity uh, based off like racial insensitive. And for me, I wouldn't notice it because I did grow up around those guys. Like I grew up around the kids that are like the kids from Monster Squad. You know, like I said, I used stupid fucking words up until about seventh grade, where I had a big diverse bunch of fucking friends, and people could tell me like, "Hey, don't say that." I'm like, "Shit, I'm sorry, I didn't think about it." The old people hung with said this shit all the time. That's all you had to do is tell me once and that's it. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> yeah. Gone forever. But, you know, and I, if more people would just be that way, if somebody tells you, hey, that hurt me or I don't agree with it, then fucking don't do it. That's yeah. it. Don't go. Why? It depends on the group that they're yeah. in or, you know, yeah. sometimes people don't, people don't want to speak out. They want to feel like, oh, that's cool. I'm, I, you know, no. Oh, yeah. Just, fuck that. I'm like, fucking... holy shit. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I love those. And I can still go back for the most part and watch <clears> a lot of those movies. I watched all those fucking American Pie movies. Didn't find them as funny as I once did. Yeah. You know, like. Stifler is just impossible to. I remember like thinking he was the funniest fucking dude in the world when I was like 13. And going back and watching that character, I'm like, how does nobody kill him? Why would you be friends with him? Yeah. How's he even with this group for four fucking movies? It doesn't make sense. That's or, the great thing about Stuart yeah. Gordon, though. Yeah. That's, is he is as an adult male, he knew exactly what he was doing. He was like, no, no, no. 
I'm going to have these characters in here and they're going to fucking die horribly. Oh, yeah. And it's yeah. great. And most of that stuff, like, it's kind of weird because we're talking about these Stuart Gordon movies that are brutal on the violence side. And, you know, like some of the scenes we talked about. But, man, like, really, I never watch it and feel like it didn't age well. I don't feel like that ever. I'm never no. like, you know, because I, I don't I don't remember any of the language being racist in it or homophobic at no, any I point. Mean, like you mentioned, and, uh, Ken, he gassed Ken Forey. And, on purpose. Yeah, and yeah, and on Lovecraft purpose. That's to tell Absolutely. Lovecraft to suck it, you know? Yes. Yeah. And I know that makes some people mad. I know some people are like, you know, oh, it's Lovecraft. It was his time and all this shit. I don't care. No. Like, we could we could still enjoy what, what he's put out and the things we have, but we can also question. I'm glad he's man. fucking dead. And yeah. be glad he's dead. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like, fuck him. You know? Like, yeah. He did change history. He did add a lot of fucking, I mean, all of our heroes are even, that's yeah. their hero. Yeah, if there was an H.P. Lovecraft statue right now, probably fucking tear it down. Fucking that'd heck. be on the list. Well, that's kind of like what was the the award. The award they changed that. Yeah, he freaked the because fuck out about that, that person was like, "I'm a person of color." I think it was a black person actually. And yeah, that like, one. Thank you so much, like, but this is a fucking bigot's head. I'm you're yeah. giving me. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? That's just it. Not, nobody even thought about that, or maybe they did. Yeah, they probably Shit thought about it and didn't give a fuck. Right. Or they're like, "Oh, we only give this to white people the last thirty years. We never right? had this come up." Right. You know? Why would you want that head setting in your house? I would no. You know, it's just like giving somebody Hitler's head. Hey, go, put this, <laughs> you go set this on your shelf. Yeah, yeah. Good job. That could be a whole another episode about art and artists. Yeah, and I, and I definitely want to have some uh, other uh, members no, to interview and talk to have about a, that. Have other voices. I mean, I would love to talk about you know talk to other artists out there, filmmakers, fans, just to get different opinions on it. You know, because it's definitely it's something that comes up all the fucking time now, even with like. And then you got like these fucking edge lords that anytime you mention something, they're like, oh, it's going to get canceled. Fucking cancel culture is killing us. Like they announced the new Beavis and Butthead. And I was, I'm on that fucking Joe Bob forum, right? Which as much as I love Joe Bob, a good portion of the fan base likes the character a little too much, you know? Oh, it's and like, like a, soon as they like post the about Henson character, yeah, whatever, it's like 70 shit. comments of dudes of like with tribal tattoo profile pictures going just like, you know it's going to cancel. People can't handle Beavis and Butthead these days. And I'm like, do you remember Beavis and Butthead? Like, do you not remember like what those dudes talk about? Like, they yeah. were never like saying like racist shit or homophobic shit. They say stupid shit. Like, it's literally fart jokes and them trying to get laid. They're not ru- <laughs> they're not roofing people. Like, they're not. There's nothing like that really. I mean, every now and then you could probably find an episode where some shit came out. But Mike Judge, for the most part, is an intelligent guy, and his writing's usually not like racist or homophobic yeah. his yeah. documentary series on the blues and bluegrass is amazing uh, it's so, amazing it's so, called tour it's called tales from the tour oh Bus. okay yeah that, animated the, the show cartoon. that he wrote and yeah he's, he voices the act uh, is that considered a docuseries i guess fuck yeah it's yeah like 10 ep- or god i love if, watching that i forgot there's a lot of episodes yeah. and i've seen all of them many many times dude yeah i sit on my couch and just sink in and watch that shit but yeah. But like, yeah, that, but that's the thing that people always react to it. Go, it's going to get canceled. Like, no, it's not. Like, name something that's been canceled, motherfucker. Like, all these guys <laughs> that say that shit, canceled. It's going to get canceled. Like, because they went, a few, like, studios went back and took some shows off your Hulu. Yeah. You can't watch a couple episodes of 30 Rock. Oh, right. You can watch 30 Rock anyway. You're in a Joe Bob forum. You're not like, a, you don't like Joe Bob and Tina Fey. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Maybe you do. But I don't Stuart, know. Stuart judging. would always push, push the buttons. He but wanted yes. to push the buttons. He wanted you to talk about his, his art. Um, and you, we are, we're still talking about it today. I mean, Oh, well, he'll, he'll be one that always comes up. It's fantastic. One of my favorite films is gotta be pit in the pendulum. He did a remake that people don't seem to talk about much. Yeah. It's amazing. And when you're watching it, you're not thinking I miss Vincent Price. This st- movie is so fucking engaging. Who stars in that? Lance Hendrickson. Lance Hendrickson. That's what it is. Lance yeah, Hendrickson. Somebody in it that I watched Tom it Tolls. Cause he, to- he corrected me one time we were at a pool party. He was like Tolls motherfucker. Also no longer with us. Yes. God, RIP. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, Jeffrey Combs is in it. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, the guy, what's God damn it. The, the head of the mafia in Oz, the older gentleman he's in it. I can't think of his name all of a sudden. He's fantastic. There's so many really fantastic actors. Uh, the, the <laughs> Shabata. Oh, yeah. That's a, oh, that's his, that's his that's name. His in the show. Yeah. It's his name in the show, oh, I'm sorry. but, uh, that movie that. is, a, it's about, Shibata. it's very poignant in this point in time. Cause it's literally them using their power over poor people and you know obviously the it's the it's Spanish inquisition so it's like tyranny over you know, over during the black plague yeah and if you don't like what we're doing you're you're a sinner and you're going to be we're going to we're going to take you inside we're going to bring you know it, it's so poignant to what's going on right now you say it all sounds really familiar it does and i just i just recently rewatched it and i was like oh, it's, holy fuck i do need i need how, to how, that how much is that 
perfectly like it didn't age at all it's like wow there it is this is what's yeah. going on i haven't seen that since probably elementary school to be honest with you and the only reason why i watched it is because i loved lance hendrickson mm -hmm. you know why i loved lance hendrickson man's best friend <laughs> I, like, uh, I, I like love that. it you pulled that, that out of your ass it's great i know i just it's just one of those weird things you remember in your head he was the man's best friend guy he wasn't alien to me at the time it was yeah. man's best friend I, I was so excited with ali sheedy i think right <laughs> yes <laughs> holy shit yeah uh, but Lance Henderson, Fucking I think dog. in his finest performance, I love Millennium and uh, Aliens. He's 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 just being in whatever. Bishop. Uh, at night, yeah, and in, in Near Dark. But uh, fucking God, everything about him, the way he moves, the way he talks, everything is so well thought out. And uh, how yeah. much he, time he put into making that character. And the movie only cost about two million, and it made like three hundred thousand. Yeah, it was I'm just a go. massive bomb. I think he made it for Full Moon. Greg Canham did the special effects who did like Lost Boys and he's part of the crew on like the Howling with Bravo nice. Team. Like it's the, the effects are fucking amazing. I need to go back and, and watch that. And it's real, it's a real dramatic. There's only a couple of It's like, on light. some streaming sites too. I just haven't. Oh, I don't know. Uh, but it yeah, is. I'm it's sure, only, I'm I, think sure it's on, I think it's on Shudder or Prime. I gotta hope so because it needs to be seen. Yeah. Now, I'm going to go home and watch it now after I find this fucking reanimator musical. But I'm also <laughs> going through. Reanimator <laughs> musical, pet in the bench. And then. It's a downer. There's only, there's only a couple of jokes. After His I'm wife with, makes one. Oh, who's gosh. in it, of course. Yeah. yeah. After I'm done with those two things, I'm going to watch the reanimator, reanimator musical. Remember. Words are crazy. Pit in the pendulum. And then I'm going to get on the Gore Club page and I'm going to have a poll. And I want to know if you think Lance Hendrickson is better in Man's Best Friend or Steve's fucking movie here. Pit in the Pendulum. In the pendulum. <laughs> That's no fair. Yes. People always you're those are gonna choose be, those a are, fun movie. Those are like polar opposites. But that's good though. Yeah, I want to know which one he's better in. Because I feel like Man's Best Friend's like I'll art. say I'll say the horror show. I've got the movie poster on the wall back there. <laughs> House three. Oh, yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, do I, I don't I don't I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel any voice when you say that. Uh, so, so you were talking about the, uh, the the Stuart Gordon's the wonderful ice cream suit. Oh god. Yeah, you've seen this. I haven't I seen can, it. Okay. So there are a few of his that I have not seen, and that is one of them. So yeah, and this we can kind of tie this together too. So I can I can go to a movie that I want to talk about after I uh, discuss this. Because Clifton Collins Jr. stars in this one. And uh and what's his it, Edward Lamas, Ed, Edward James, almost. Edward, Edward James, yeah. almost, yeah. There, okay, there's Blade James. Runner, there. baby. Sorry, man. Sometimes names just fucking, you know, people I know, I'm like, what's your name? Edward Carl Jr. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this movie's essentially about, uh, I think, three or four guys get this suit. And it's like the, the ice cream suit. It's this white suit that's $100. They all put their money together and they buy this suit and they agree to where each one gets to wear it for a day. It's like the rent the suit. You wear it for a day. And essentially it like it makes their lives better and then bad things happen and it's teaching them all like this weird life lesson. But it's just like super corny, like over the top, like yeah. family movie. If somewhere like during this conversation, if the poster could just pop up like right here, yeah. that'd be great so you can understand like, <laughs> we'll, we'll work on that, won't we, Shane? <laughs> yeah, what the hell I'm talking about? Because it, it's just I can't go too deep into it because I've watched it once in my whole life because of Stuart Gordon. I was like, I got to see this movie, but it's this really goofy life definitely lesson. definitely burned into your brain, though. Family movie. Yeah, because it's like the, the called the ice cream suit like or whatever. If you, saw the, if you saw the poster or the box, you you would know. You'd you know, know like, it. this is not a Stuart Gordon movie. It doesn't look like a Stuart yeah, Gordon movie. It's and you nothing would, you think about. And you wouldn't rent it either, but Which I like, think is awesome. I just have problems. And I, sometimes I rent things. Yeah. And I'm like, that's coming home with me. You're bored. You worked like in a video Mike. store. He's all over the place with his movies. He's like, I'm going to do a martial arts movie. I'm going to do a fucking yeah, movie. Yeah, but throw you up. can't even compare him because that motherfucker's just like, let's do 60 movies 13 in, a in one year. year. Yeah, Holy it's insane. Fuck. I'm like, why don't you take a nap? I used to love telling. <laughs> I, I used to love to tell people to to rent audition. That was always great. Be like, no, it's a oh, drama. Oh man, it's a drama. Just just watch. Yeah, it. it's a drama. Yeah, it's, audition it's, was like one of like the five Japanese movies you'd have at the video store. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, yeah. It was like yeah, audition was the only one. Okay, one of the few that you didn't have to have an American remake for them to put the Japanese one on the shelf. So that was always fun to be like, hey, yeah, I'll check that out. Well, it you was kind of that first wave of, of Asian horror films that people were like, what the fuck is this? They were brutal. Well, an yeah. audition kind of is a slow burn. It in is a, way, a slow burn. You know? Some people don't even while. like it. I'm like, whatever, man. Let's not talk. Yeah, you guys are bored. But uh, yeah, going back to that, Clifton Collins Jr., though, is also in another Stuart Gordon film <laughs> with Christopher Lambert. 
Oh, oh. <laughs> there, we go, and, there we go. And Tom's gonna, house. Oh, yeah. So bringing all those tolls. guys back in. Tolls. I was calling yeah. Tolls. I did too. And he was like, Tolls. Yeah, that's yeah. a dude. He's a pretty big dude. By the man. I let him correct me too. I'm like, man, Tom Tolls is scary. in like, uh, he's in Rob Zombie movies. He's in uh, Henry, Henry. Portrait Serial Killers when he first, I think this is one of his first Another roles. very uncomfortable. Yes, it is. Yeah. But it's a landmark movie. Yeah. Dave Fortress. 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 <laughs> Christopher Lambert. Oh, you I seem excited, it. so I'm going to give you the wheel. Oh, no. I mean, I don't need the wheel for it. I mean, what I can remember of it. I mean, it's been years so, since I've seen that one. So it's in a time where I think it's like women. You can not You can only have like one child and there's an issue with people getting pregnant. I can't remember the exact story as far as like, I know abortion's like illegal yeah. because people aren't having kids or some shit. So then you have this penitentiary full of like in one cell. I don't know the rest of the fucking inmates. They don't really introduce them, but you have Clif- <laughs> they're not important. You have uh, Never mind. Clifton Collins Jr. who pays like the younger guy of the group. Jeffrey Combs playing like this weird kind of quirky fucking guy. Tom Tolls, <laughs> Towels, Tolls, whatever the fuck. I'll say, I'll say it right. I'm sorry. Uh, playing kind of like the the punk ass like jerk in the cell, and then of course you got Christopher Lambert who's going to be the uh, badass hero. Yeah. One of my favorite scenes is when it opens up. Uh, Tom grabs Christopher Lambert's character, a character, grabs Christopher Lambert by his fucking neck. And it's just like, <laughs> that's the real one. You don't want to meet, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, who are you talking about? And he's like, he's got 187 on his forehead. And do you know what 187 means? Like, it's supposed to be this big the Samuel L. Like Jackson scene. movie told me yeah. what it was. <laughs> but it was just so funny that they just, you know what 187 means? And everybody's like in a cell, like Jeffrey Cones and Clifton Collins, just like, oh, what, 187? Like that's homicide. Oh, and then they introduce this character. And that's it's a futuristic movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the, and the character of one eight seven on his forehead. Do you know who played him? No. Vernon Wells. Oh, that's fucking amazing. I have not seen that movie yeah. since it came out because it came out like around the yep. same time I saw Prison with uh, you know it's a Beekler film. Yep. Uh, go ahead. It's weird. I didn't mean, to interrupt you. Yeah. Actually, and then your uh, your main villain, uh, the warden of the penitentiary. I can't remember his name, but he's red from that seventy show, and he's RoboCop and all oh, those. Yeah. Oh, so he Clarence Bodiger. Yeah, he's your he's your main guy. He's like, so he's your main villain in the movie. So he just essentially sets around like all these TVs, the whole movie spies on everybody. And they got this technique called, oh, my God, it's like intestine, intest, intestinate because they make your intestines explode. So it's like this. He's like intestinate him. Holy shit. And then they'll show it. And it's like this little pop goes off like this little bomb in their stomach. And they just bleed the fuck out. Instead of like the color yeah. that's been become like cliche now. Yeah. It's the uh, yeah. So there's essentially like, I mean, I can't even remember the whole story, uh, but I just know like this is way more than I remember. I just remember liking it and it being utterly ridiculous. I'm a, I was a Highlander guy. Well, so you just going deep. Just remember, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just a weird. That's deep, the reason you watch dive. all the movies is because like, oh, Christopher yeah. Lambert, I remember him. Yeah. And he was kind of a badass back then, yeah. you know, all the way up until like about Mortal Kombat. Then he started kind of. <sighs> Bad. Showing his age, I guess, after that. Yeah, that's another <laughs> thing we'll talk about one day because Derek likes that movie and I hate it. Oh, yeah, we can talk about that all day. I love the first one. Let's not do <sighs> Annihilation. But I, love the first one. <laughs> I thought Annihilation was better. But that that it's a weird futuristic prison, though. And they had you should go back and watch it because I think you would be entertained by it. Cause you like those kind of futuristic, crazy ass movies anyway. Oh, yeah. And it, it is like a I know Red's character somehow like impregnates this girl, but I don't know how he impregnates her. So she becomes like his like weird like lady slave, but she's trying to escape and all the prisoners are trying to escape. So that's like the main story. He's trying to get the fuck out of this prison while like dude of 187 on his foreheads harassing people. Red Foreman's fucking <laughs> making your intestinate. Why is it every, why is it every movie in the 90s it made a point to say 187? Like, 187. oh, you know what that is? Like uh, like the Demolition Man, didn't it? 187. And oh, they're yeah. Like, they're like, what is that? What I don't is know. That? Oh, man. Somebody's dead. Yeah, you remember that? And the, and the she sells. That's all yeah. you remember. The yeah, seashells. I, I, figure that one out. I don't know. I love Demolition Man. Yeah, apparently there's like something online that I'm tells you how to use the sea, the she sells. Why would they have it? I can't it? say. No, it's not. Seashells? It's not, it's not real? It's not legit. Or is it gross? And Taco Bell, right? Taco Bell. Taco Bell. There, well, it depends on what version you watch. There's one that has, I think, Pizza Hut. And then like Dennis Leary's like the yeah. rat king in it. Hell yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> just, Dennis Leary has become one of those fallen heroes because he's a plagiarist. I never knew that as a kid, but yeah. Oh, he stole from Bill Hicks. Uh, yes. Yeah. What, don't, nobody steals from Bill Hicks. Yeah, he did, he did it while, I, think, I feel like he did it while Bill was still alive. Mm-hmm. And then later on, he released, became Bill. Sorry, I got Hicks. excited. Sorry, Dave's like, I, what the fuck, dude? I, I, I did not know that. I love yeah. Bill Hicks. Yes, he did. Yeah. And then he did like No Cure for Cancer, which a lot of people came back, which is 
Larry's like biggest special. And a lot of people came back saying that's like tons of Hicks material in that. Uh, I think originally he said Hicks gave him his blessing. I think that was the story. And then it was like kind of bullshit. Mm. And then I think when Joe Rogan set that whole thing off, people were going back and going, oh, yeah, what about, what about Robin Williams? What about, because a lot of people's names well, are popping up. Yeah. And I know a lot of people don't like Rogan, but man, when he called out Carlos Mencia yeah. and he came on stage, like at the comedy store, Mencia's doing his bit. I've seen that video. Rogan walks times. on stage and is like, this motherfucker steals from my friends. Yeah. He doesn't even have a microphone at the time. He's, no, just, yelling he's just yelling loud yelling. enough for everyone to hear him. And then what's funny is like Mencia tries to cut him off and Rogan's like, your own fucking crowd's booing you, dude. Like you lost. Get over it. And that was the whole thing. And plus he could, the thing is he could kick Mencia's ass. So yeah, brutally. that's the. I think that's where like Mencia kind of backed off a little bit. He just said a couple words yeah. and tried to be like, yeah, bro, bro, you don't know. You don't know that type of shit. And it and got sucks ran over. because sometimes it just takes one person to be like, I'm fucking sick of this shit yeah. and jump up on stage and do something like that. But that, that, yeah, when you go back, you, you, Dennis yeah. Leary, I was like, so bummed. It sucks. And I grew up, we all grew up on him on MTV ranting and raving. It's <laughs> I'm like, an this asshole. Guy's fucking awesome. Right. That yeah, too. That asshole song, man. And then, you know, fuck. Yeah, it sucks. But it happens. The ref was people. one of my favorite Christmas movies. The ref? The ref. Oh, man, that's a low bar. No, I fucking love it. It has that awful, like, remember the monk hip hop sort of beat music that was coming out? Uh, I wish they would put Dennis oh, Leary. Forget it. <laughs> I don't remember that, Steve. If they, you don't remember that whole don't fucking remember. music genre. We're talking about, like, we were talking like about Ace Stuart of Gordon. Bass. Now you're talking about oh, Ace yeah. of Bass. We have went way off I track. I want to intestinate the great thing Dennis is, Leary. Stuart Gordon has worked with so many of these people in his films, and what we're talking about still circles around him pushing the 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 the, the envelope and that's oh, we're, we're talking about people doing that so it just kind of keeps branching off but <laughs> get used to it people yeah i mean we're always going to branch off a little bit i mean what's crazy is that you can fill two hours three hours with just talking about what Stuart gordon's done somebody do it then people can <laughs> yeah that's what we're doing motherfuckers. <laughs> sorry i was trying to explain this prison movie to these guys, Dave got excited, and Dave's like, "Whoop! I don't remember." And I'm like, "Well, I guess I'll fucking." Come. I remember, I remember me, some of the movie, but let, I just don't remember the whole. Let plot. me try to spit some member berries at you. Member berries. See what happens? <laughs> it's it's a fun. That was another one that I good. watched in the '90s. It is 2020, so. Well, yeah. you motherfucker, you just watch more movies. What are you doing? Trying to watch new movies, I guess. You don't have new movies. Apparently, not enough because I haven't seen Color of Space yet. Color of Space is fucking great. It's uh, a Nick Cage movie, haha, but. Uh, it, I don't know. It's finally people are tar- starting when, when that movie comes out. People are starting to take Lovecraft serious again, so they can make good movies, get good, good quality movies. Like the movies that you could only find for Lovecraft or like film directors were like it was Stuart Gordon. There was an, actually another one called The Necronomicon, uh, and it's like an anthology movie, which is funny how this connects to Stuart Gordon because Stuart Gordon's life. There's a story, the wraparound story for Necronomicon is uh, how Lovecraft finds the book. He is invited to the library to find it and they're like you have to come to this section and you you know you can't it's like invitation only and it's really secretive they take them to this one section where it's at and they have to unlock this thing that is exactly the same story the real life story of how Stuart Gordon discovered his first Lovecraft book he had to call the library they were like well you can't, you can't take it out you have to come here and it's so weird how that worked out and then when sure. yeah it was another one of those uh, stories that I read and I was like that is the fucking that's the whole wraparound story of the Necronomicon it's like somebody heard that story from Stuart Gordon and took it and put it in that movie. There's no coincidence. Come on. It's a Lovecraft movie with the exact same, almost the exact same setup of how he discovered Lovecraft. Come on. I'm not reaching here, by the way. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like there's some reach. There's a little bit of reach. Probably. But I, I'll put my hat. I'll put the tempo. You're trying to tell me that the I'll guy who basically brought Lovecraft into the 80s, uh, whoever made Necronomicon in the 90s, didn't know about Love, uh, Stuart Gordon? Oh, oh absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there's there's a connection there. Maybe he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just want to argue. You don't know. You don't know what he knew. Is he still alive? Can we tweet him? You think there's a commentary on the DVD? Is it on DVD? <laughs> I don't know. I've got the VHS. I've got two of them. I don't know how that happened. It has to be on DVD. I'm sure it is. Everything's on DVD now. Uh, no, no, no. Uh-uh. I feel like we're at the point where damn near everything. Yeah, you would think about you know now Blu-ray and whatever it, the hell's next. If it's not on DVD, it's going to get like a super duper collector's edition for sixty dollars yeah, from seven K. There, we got the soundtrack on here. We got the we got how this was made, and we got this whole interview with this guy talking about how he has no idea who Stuart Gordon is. I'm like, God, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really specific special feature, <laughs> just to give Steve shit. It's true. It's true. I'd pay for that. 
Yeah, but oh. you, or you, you just can, want to see me humiliated. I I can appreciate that too. Actually, you get the sixty dollars special edition from Synapse, or you can get the thirty five dollar, which is nothing. Oh, good. Dave, throwing Synapse under the bus. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, no, it's okay. I'll, I'll try not to be angry about it, but I didn't want to buy demons. I think everyone has had that story when it comes to buying buying a Blu Ray. Like a, like you know, when I buy a Blu Ray, it's because it's for the special features. When I go and buy yeah. Dagon when it came out, I wanted the most action you know the special feature packed D- uh, blu-ray dvd that i could possibly get or you can get the bare bones with the trailer hey or Re-animator. you can get you know commentary that's still book for reanimators sweet man they so. i love how they just keep re re i will go buy every fucking edition that they've put out yeah they've gotten me on that a few times i had that original dvd set that was like the thick almost vhs style like dvd that came out yeah that at home then i rebought the one that came with the syringe yep i got that one you have got that one see because rachel was going through our dvds and she's like we've got two copies of this and i'm like stop what are you doing put those back yeah. <laughs> we'll keep both of those they're bif- they're different they're different yeah. the special features are different so. i think reanimator hellraiser and evil dead are the ones i've rebought the most times and i'm talking about just reanimator though versus two franchises you know so, oh i know you know hellraiser and evil dead i've bought the franchises you know box sets over and over or evil dead had the special collector's edition like where you got the necronomicon like the book oh yeah I've got and you could push its little eyeball and shit yeah that was cool reanimator's always just gotten really like extra special features or goofy shit like the syringe or that latest still book, I think it's Arrow. Is it? A, it's Arrow, right? That's the thing about it. It's like Shout yeah, Factory and Arrow just keep battling back and forth. Yeah, and now Arrow Shout, Shout Factory's like, well, we're putting goddamn action figures on these. And I'm like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I like the action Triple, figures. Triple, dipple, dipple, dipping. Dippin'. Special feature wise and transfer wise, I think Arrow dribble. beats them. <laughs> and I like still books. Still Which books. Yeah. Shout Factory started doing, but Arrow kind of had a big lead on that already. And that reanimator one's got so many special features on it. It's fucking gold. Should go watch it. I guess I should buy it and put it on the shelf with the other ones. You know what they should put on the next reanimated release special edition? What's that? The fucking musical. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so if anybody out here that can make that happen, can anybody listening? If anybody from any of the DVD companies we just shit on can go back and do that, yeah, that would be awesome. Please. But, uh, I think we've went through damn near all of his filmography. At least the ones uh, that we really love. That we remember. really love. I know we didn't talk about Reanimator as much as people expect. That's so but, obvious, but you've seen it. If you haven't, just go fucking watch it or go buy it. It's one of the best like horror comedies of all time. There's a million different versions. Uh, you can buy it. Yeah. They don't need us to push it, even though we just told you every version of it that's out. Yeah. And, and the streaming services. It is on Shutter right now. You can get a free trial. 30 days. <laughs> Thank you uh, for paying us for that. No, they didn't. Yeah. But I think... Uh, what we should discuss is what's everybody's favorite Stuart Gordon movie? Is it is it Reanimator all around or no? What mine is, is definitely uh, From Beyond. From I Beyond? like From Beyond more than I do Reanimator. All right, I I always have. But my favorite is, since I've re rediscovered it, it's uh, is Pit in the Pendulum because of all the themes that he's put in there. The effects are just top notch. It's like he really got a decent budget to make the movies that he could see, like his vision. Uh, it was released properly, it just didn't make a fucking dime. It sucked. I, don't, I can't remember. I wish I could remember the first time I saw it. Probably my dad's video store. And uh, it was the same thing with the box. It's Lance Henriksen sitting there yeah. with the pendulum holding the pendulum and he's looking like a badass. I'm like, that's the guy from Alien. I can't wait to see that. And there's like, or no, dumbass aliens. Friend. Man's best friend. Yeah. But that's how that's how young I was. I was like, it's the guy from yeah. Alien. And my dad's like, yeah. you mean aliens? Because he was that guy. He's, oh, yeah. He instilled that shit into me. He's like, no, it's not called Bud the Chud until it became like on DVD. It's yeah. Chud 2, Steven. We gotta blame our parents for our shittiness. Oh yeah, my mom got me into the nerd stuff. So it's Chud to Steven. Ch- exactly. Chud. That's exactly, Chud. exactly what it is. Gone. That's what he did. Chud Bud, the Chud, Bud the Chud, because the Chud was the uh, video poster, but before that, it was Chud too. Yeah. I would say for <laughs> I'd say for me, it's probably from Beyond. Really? I mean, okay. and then Dagon is a close second because, like so I said, just Dagon just like it was. It was very unexpected. I didn't know yeah. much about it, and I just I just picked it up out of the blue and just hey, this is this is a really good movie, Lovecraft. I and love all of them. From so beyond, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to pick a favorite. You know, like a, the best one. But you know, for me personally, from beyond, yeah, he's one of the favorite. few guys I don't really have anything I can really shit on of his. You know, which is a, a first. Oh, yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's a, a first for uh, you. A first for me. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely stuff I don't love, but I mean, really, there's nothing I can be like. Hey, you should never watch that. It's a piece yeah, of shit. I think the closest uh, would be Castle Freak. But yeah, it's probably still Castle good. Freak. Yeah, just for me. Just I don't mean, watch it with your kids. I, I get why people. <laughs> yeah, I totally understand why people love Castle Freak. It yeah. is a good, like, creepy ass movie. Kind of slow, but creepy as fuck. And you gotta turn your brain off for a minute with some of the stuff that happens, but that's fine. Reanimator, though, 
Reanimator and Robot Jocks are yeah. up there. Robot Jocks for a different reason. Just being a kid watching that so many fucking times. Space Truckers came up when I was younger, uh, and I just I, it blew me away. Dennis Hopper is great. Yeah. Stephen Dorff, I think, is in that. Stephen Dorff, the Square that. Pig. We didn't yeah. really should have totally dug into that. Well, it, was, it was great because he he went from sci-fi, and yeah. then you know we didn't even talk about Crash and Burn, but he didn't really write that the, the yeah. sequel to Robot Jocks. Yeah, that's not a real sequel. It's not. It's, it's got not Bill Mosley. That's the best part. Yeah, yeah. I'll end on. I'll say even though. I'll go with Reanimator. Robot Jocks is just a piece yeah. of my life of being a kid and going, fuck, I watch this. I've watched it more than Reanimator, but I just think it's a classic, man. It's a horror classic. I'm wearing this fucking shirt. Oh, yeah, you are. I'm a mark. I buy everything. I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah, it's Reanimator. Give it to me. The DVDs. The Can shirts. you imagine that being your first fucking movie? It's his first movie. That's his first movie. And that's another thing. I think it's just so impressive that he just came out the gate with something like that. Yeah. Something that can make me laugh and also kind of make me want to vomit. It's great. And he did. That's what falter. I'm looking for in a lady. Well, he, and he didn't, he, he didn't falter. <laughs> yeah. Because usually <laughs> he you didn't falter. Like yeah. that's my, that's my, that's my opus. I'm never going to make another cemetery man. Like, yeah. Uh, so obviously never made a, another movie since cemetery man. It's like, it's like, are you going to be, be able to beat that man? If you just kept on going, it'd been great. Stuart Gordon was always knocking out of the park. I think, I think that speaks to his character too. He was really humble about it. He wasn't like, Oh, oh man, a, I'm the greatest ever. He no. was just like, yeah, that's, I, I like the movie. Yeah. And right, well, it's, and I'm so happy that I got to meet him, uh, just from a fan nerd, like just nerding out, like Derek was saying, I, I didn't even know what the hell to say to the guy. I'm like, uh, 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 uh can, do you have a from beyond poster for me to sign? You know, yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> it's that, right here. And that's the main thing from signed. all this. I mean, we all get a little cynical if we go to a lot of conventions. If you're new to conventions, you're, you're probably thinking about it differently. Like, holy shit, get to meet these guys. We see these guys so often, eventually we pass by them. We don't even say hi anymore, or even make eye contact. Or but you're like, actually on the level of yeah. just saying, hi, yeah. what's up? And having yeah. a drink at the bar. You don't yeah. think about actually asking for an autograph. Yeah. But I'm saying when this shit's oh. over, with all these people we've lost, going back to, you know, Danny Hicks, Sid Hicks, Stuart Gordon. Fucking like, Danny, fucking, man. fucking cherish this shit while it lasts. When this, when this COVID stuff's over with, we can go to conventions again. Fucking say hi. Say what's up to these guys. Half the time they're sitting at a table by themselves bored as shit. Yeah. You know, don't go with that guy again. Fucking say what's up, because you're gonna be really sad when they're gone. And that's a bummer note to end on, but fuck it. God damn. I don't give a shit. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, give I still us don't a like Joel like. Schumacher. Give us a subscribe, <laughs> subscribe, hit the subscribe button. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you can follow us on almost every platform now uh, for podcasts. And uh, anything you want to say, Dave? No, I think I think I think Derek Derek fucking brought us down enough. Yeah, I want to cry. Yeah. I'm here. I'm here to crash and burn. Yeah, real good sequel. sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye. Good night or good morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh.